Oh. Oh. Hi. Hi. Welcome to Camp Read a Lot. I'm Mrs. Hammock, and I am so excited you're here at camp. You know, camp is a great place to learn and, of course, have fun. And here at Camp Read a Lot, we're going to spend our days reading and talking and singing and learning and doing all kinds of activities that are going to help us to grow to be strong readers because that is what is important. Hey, parents, have you thought about taking a field trip to the library with your family? What a great fun place that's free. And you can get library cards for the whole family. And then maybe put in your schedule time to go to the library weekly or every other week so you can check out new books to read together. It would be a great fun way to spend some family time together. And it doesn't cost anything. A lot of our libraries have super fun summer reading programs for everybody, not just the kids. And remember, when kids don't read over the summer, they can go back in their progress up to two years. We do not want that to happen. So I hope that you'll find time to visit your library and check out some good books. Hey campers, are you ready? Hello readers, hello writers, hello campers, I'm glad you're here today. Hello readers, hello writers, hello campers, I'm glad you're here today. And I am, I'm so glad you're here today. Are you ready to do our pledge? Okay, let me stand up and let's get our salute ready. Here we go. On my honor, I will try my best to be kind to everyone, to have a smile on my face and a song in my heart. Very nicely done. Today, we're going to train our ears for sound by playing the segmenting game. That's right, segmenting means taking a word apart one sound at a time. And as always, our friend Scooter is going to help us with that. And so let's get started. Do you see him? That squirrel is never where he's supposed to be. Scooter! Hey, Scooter! Where are you? Oh, you know what? I bet he's hiding in that tree again because he likes to go up in the tree. Let's go see. Hey! <gasps> hey! What are those shoes? Where did you get shoes? Did you take someone's shoes? Well, where? Those, what are you going to do in those shoes? Hey, that reminds me of a song. Do you, are you ready? We're going to talk about those shoes. I like, I have to know where they came from. And I, I'm not sure that those are actually your shoes. Well, I, yes, we'll talk about it later. All right, are you ready? The campers are here. We're going to play our segmenting game. Okay. All right, do you have a word for us? Or were you busy with the shoes? Okay. Ah, that's a good one. Okay. We're going to segment land. Can you segment the word land? Let's do it together. L, A, N, D. Very nice. Land. L, A, N, D. That's four sounds. Very nice. All right, do you have another word for us? Okay. Okay. Ready? Shout. Shout. Let's break it apart. Here we go. Sh. Ow. Shout. Let's clap it. Sh. 
Ow. T. Shout. How many times did you clap? Three. Good job. Let's try one more word. Oh, hmm. Price. I'm kind of worried about the price of those shoes. Price. Are you ready? P. R. I. S. Price. P. R. I. S. Good job. Four sounds. Nicely done. Now that is something that can help you as you're reading, sounding out words, but it's also a great skill to have when you are trying to write words. Because if you can say the word one sound at a time, then you'll know which letters to write to make that word. I agree, that is a very good thing to clap for. Great job, campers. Okay, I have, yep, I have a joke for you. All right, here we go. Why is a computer so smart? Why is a computer so smart? Do you know? No? Because it listens to its motherboard. <laughs> Get it? The motherboard? Like, listen to your mother? Yeah, it's a good one. I love it. You could be smart like your, like, like your computer. Listen to your motherboard. <laughs> oh, okay, hey, are you ready for our catch of the day? You are? Okay, well, I think you're really gonna like it. And I'm still very curious about those shoes and where they came from. Mm-hmm, all right. So you're gonna take a seat, right? Don't be wandering off. Yes, I know, we're going to have some more later, but not right now. Oh, I'm gonna have to make sure I go to the get some s'more things. All right, here we go. Our catch of the day words. This word is challenge, challenge. A challenge is something that might get in your way or something that you have to overcome. Often it can be difficult. So a challenge is something that you have to uh, get through or get over. Okay, how about this one? Empathy. Empathy. Empathy is, hmm, it's when you understand the way that someone is feeling. Like maybe you don't feel sad, but you see your friend and you understand they're feeling sad. That is what empathy is. And we should all, all have some of that. Okay. And this one is budget. Budget. Budget means a plan that you write down to decide where your money's going to be spent, how you spend your money. Budgets are very, very important. And as you grow up and you have money to spend, I hope that you will learn how to make a budget because you need to make sure that you are only spending money that you have and not going into debt, which is bad. So budgets will help you do that. You'll know more about that as you get older. All right, let's take a look at our story. Our story is called, oh, hmm. Reading tools on. Our story is called, Those Shoes. Now I understand why you have shoes on. Mm -hmm. Those Shoes by Mary Beth Boltz and illustrated by Noah Z. Jones. Those Shoes. What do you notice on the cover of the book? Right, there's a big picture of a shoe. And then did you notice down here? The boys all have on the same shoes, but not this boy. Hmm. I wonder what this story is going to be about. Here's our front cover and our back cover. And then we look inside and we find the title page. Those shoes. All right, let's see what's going to happen. Let's jump in to our story. Here's a commercial on the side of a building. It says, buy these shoes. 
I have dreams about those shoes. Black high tops, two white stripes. Who's talking in this story, do you know? Right, the little boy here. He's the narrator, right? He's telling the story. Grandma, I want them. There's no room for want around here, just need, Grandma says. And what you need are new boots for winter. Brandon T. comes to school in those shoes. He says he's the fastest runner now, not me. I was always the fastest runner before those shoes came along. Nate comes to school in those shoes. Antonio and I count how many times Nate goes to the bathroom. Seven times in one day, just so he can walk up and down the hall real slow in those shoes. Next, Alan, Jacoby, and Terrence each get a pair of those shoes. Then one day, in the middle of kickball, one of my shoes comes apart. Looks like you're, you could use a new pair, Jeremy, said Mr. Alfie, the guidance counselor. He brings out a box of shoes and other stuff he has for kids who need things. He helps me find the only shoes that are in my size. Velcro. Like the ones my little cousin Marshall wears. They have an animal on them from a cartoon I don't think any kid ever watched. When I come back to the classroom, Alan Jacoby takes one look at my Mr. Alfie shoes and laughs. And so do Terrence, Brandon T, and everyone else. The only kid not laughing is Antonio Parker. At home, Grandma says, how kind of Mr. Alfie. I nod and turn my back. I'm not going to cry about these dumb shoes. <sighs> but when I'm writing my spelling words later, every word looks like the word shoes. And my grip is so tight on my pencil, I think it might bust. Hmm. On Saturday, Grandma says, Let's check out those shoes you're wanting so much. I got a little bit of money set aside. They might be enough, you never know. At the store, Grandma turns those shoes over so she can check the price. When she sees it, she sits down real heavy. Maybe they wrote it down wrong, I say. Grandma shakes her head, mm-mm. Then I remember the thrift shop. Maybe if there's a rich kid who outgrew his and got two pairs for Christmas and had to give one of them away. We ride the bus to the thrift shop, for, to the first thrift shop. Black cowboy boots, pink slippers, sandals, high heels, every kind of shoe except the ones I want. We ride the bus to the second thrift shop. Not a pair of those shoes in sight. Around the corner to the thr third thrift shop. I see something in the window. Black shoes with two white stripes, high tops, perfect shape, $2.50. Those shoes. My heart is pounding so hard as I take off my shoes and I hitch up my baggy socks. <gasps> How exciting, Grandma says. What size are they? I shove my foot into the first shoe, curling my toes to get my heel in. I don't know, but I think they fit. Do you think they fit? Grandma kneels on the floor and feels for my toe at the end of the shoe. <gasps> oh, Jeremy, she said. I can't spend good money on shoes that don't fit. I pull the other shoe on and I try to walk around. They're okay. I say, holding my breath and praying that my toes will fall right off then and there, but my toes don't fall off. 
I buy them anyway with my very own money and I squeeze them on and I limp all the way to the bus stop. He really wants those shoes, doesn't he? At home a few days later, Grandma puts a new pair of snow boots in my closet and doesn't say a word about my two big feet shuffling around in my two small shoes. S sometimes shoes stretch, I say to Grandma. She gives me a big hug. I check every day, but those shoes don't stretch. I have to wear my Mr. Alfie's to school instead. One day during math, I glance at Antonio's shoes. One of them is taped up and his feet, they look smaller than mine. After school, I head to the park to think. Antonio's there, the only kid who didn't laugh at my Mr. Alfie shoes. We shoot baskets. A loose piece of tape on Antonio's shoe smacks the concrete every time he jumps. I think, nope, mm-mm, mm-mm, I'm not going to do it, mm-mm, nope, I'm not doing it. We leap off of the swings, nope, I'm not going to do it. We race to the end of the playground to the, from one end to the other. I am not going to do it, I say. Do what? Antonio says, breathing hard. What do you think he's talking about? Hmm. Let's see if we can find out. Grandma calls me for supper and invites Antonio over too. After supper, he spies my shoes. <gasps> How come you don't wear them? Antonio asks. I shrug. My hands are sweaty. I can feel him wishing those shoes were his. That night, I'm awake for a long time thinking about Antonio. When morning comes, I try on my shoes one last time. Before I can change my mind, the shoes are in my coat. Snow is beginning to fall as I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of his door and I push the doorbell and I run. At school, Antonio is smiling big in his brand new shoes. I feel happy when I look at his face and mad when I look at Mr. Alfie's shoes. But later when it's time for recess, something happens. Everywhere there's snow. Leave your shoes in the hall and change into your boots, the teacher announces. Leave your shoes in the hall? It's then that I remember what I have in my backpack, new boots. New black boots that no one has ever worn before. Standing in line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward and says, thanks. I smile and give him a nudge. Let's race. Wow, what a great story. Have you ever seen a pair of those shoes? You know, the ones that everybody has that you really, really want, but they're really, really expensive. Maybe they were Jordans or one of those other kind that are super expensive. Yeah, sometimes we can't have everything that we want because our grown-ups have to give us what we need and that can be really hard especially when it seems like everybody has them except you. But you know, I want you to remember, not it might feel that way, but it's not really that way. And I know it's really hard when we really, really want something. What did you notice? Why do you think Antonio didn't laugh at him? Why was he the only one that didn't laugh? Right, he understood what it was like to want shoes that he couldn't have, right? He also, his family also could not afford to buy those expensive shoes. So he understood that he had to wear the shoes he had. His were taped up, right? Yeah. How 
wonderful and kind was it that he gave those two small shoes to Antonio. Wasn't that so kind? I think that was incredible. And I was feeling so proud of him. I bet his grandma felt so proud that he was so kind. Wasn't that awesome? Yeah, so what was the challenge of the story? What was, our, what was the challenge that our character had to overcome? Yep, that's right. He, Jeremy wanted the black shoes with the white stripes that all the kids were wearing at school. That was the challenge, right? He, he didn't have them and he really, really wanted them. What was his response? How did he respond to that? Right, he asked his grandma. He asked his grandma to help buy them. Did she want to buy the shoes for him? Of course, yes, she did. But what happened? Why couldn't she buy them? Right, she had to buy what he needed and what he needed was snow boots. So she spent her money on snow boots for him. And how kindness played a role? Let's look and see. How did kindness play a role? Grandma's willingness to help Jeremy shows kindness. She was willing to help him, right? She wanted him to have help him in any way that she could because she saw that it was something he cared really deeply about. But also, Jeremy showed kindness by sharing those shoes with his friend who couldn't have them either. I think that is a fabulous example of kindness. Don't you? Wow. What did you think about that? Yeah, you liked it too? Are those shoes the ones that all the squirrels are wearing? Yes? Oh, well, I hope that you are kind and you share too. Right. When you, somebody shared their shoes with you, that was very nice. Well, I have a joke before we go to our activity table. Are you ready for a joke? Yes? Great. All right. Let me put my reading tools away. Here is our joke. What do you call a pig that does karate? No, you don't know a pig that does karate? A pork chop. <laughs> Get it a pork? Pigs are pork and a chop for karate. <laughs> a pork chop, that was good. Oh, all right, are you ready? <laughs> Let's go over to our activity table because we're gonna do a little activity. Come on, let's go. All right, we are talking about kindness. And so today, I thought it would be fun to kind of practice things that we could do to show kindness. And the way that I've done that is I found these cute sticks. Look how cute they are. They're like little people on a stick. And I made some into puppets. Like here, this is my friend Mason. And oh, and that's my friend, um, hmm. And this is my friend Lisa and my friend Sydney. So here are my puppets. And I, you know, I'm gonna decorate the clothes later but I wanted to get them kind of done for so you could see them. So these are fun. They're at the dollar store and different places, but you could also do something else fun. If you have a printer at home, I also printed some pictures of my friends and I just put them on sticks to make like puppets. Oh, and here I am. And so you can do puppets a lot of ways or you can use the bags to make puppets. But I thought what we would do is we would do some kindness scenarios. So we're going to pretend and say, what, what would you do if your friend was feeling, you noticed that your friend was feeling sad? What could you do to show kindness? Well, my friends, we could come over and say, hi, Mason. How come you're feeling sad? Hey, come and play with us. 
and then we could go play. That's something you could do. Or maybe just one friend goes over to see Mason and maybe they just sit and talk. Maybe Mason needs a good person to listen. He has some things he needs to share. And then they could talk. Sometimes it's fun to have puppets so you could kind of act out what you might do. Practicing it makes it come natural. Well, that's all we have time for. Skin a marink a dink a dink, skin a marink a do. I love you. I love you in the morning and in the afternoon. I love you in the evening and underneath the moon. Oh. Come back and see me tomorrow. Bye bye.